Hey there, so what I want to do today is I want to upgrade this HP Victus 15 up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you don't know what laptop this is, this is currently one of the best deals that you can find right now for a gaming laptop. And it's at Walmart right now for $600. You can check out my video that I did on it up here. But what I'm going to be doing right now is upgrading the biggest issue that this thing had, which is the fact that it only comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and it's just one single stick of it. So that seriously affects affects the performance and usability of this system for day-to-day -day things in general. But thankfully, all you really have to do is open up the system and upgrade it yourself. Of course, that is an added cost on a system that at first glance seems like it's a great deal, but if you have to spend another $50 to $100 to upgrade it, is it still a great deal? Well, we're going to see what the performance uplift is like and how it affects the overall usability of the system. First and foremost though, one thing that I appreciate is that all of the screws that you need to access to unscrew the bottom panel are actually visible. There is no need to remove any rubber feet or anything, which means you're not doing any permanent damage to the chassis or the overall usability of the system. I've had HP systems before where to access the screws, I've had to remove these rubber feet and they just never stayed back on. In fact, for both of the systems that I've had like that, I just don't know where the rubber feet are anymore. They kind of just disappear as you're carrying around a laptop, throwing it in a bag and stuff like that. So after taking out all seven of the screws, we can take off the bottom panel. And right off the bat, we can see underneath this thermal shield is the two RAM slots. Unfortunately, we only have one M.2 slot. So there is no second slot so that you can upgrade the storage that would make this an insane value system but unfortunately we only have the one though it does seem like there is space for a second one they just did not add it in there now as i said before this only has one ram slot occupied with an eight gigabyte stick you could go a cheap route and throw in just another eight gigabyte stick and get up to 16 gigabytes to work with but i think that if you're going to be opening up the system you might as well throw in 32 gigabytes because it's going to expand the usability of the system dramatically 16 gigabytes is fine but 32 gigabytes is at this point a lot more noticeable in terms of making certain tasks just all around better especially if you have a lot of things open so i'm going to be putting in 32 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz memory in here so we're going to get the added benefit of having dual channel memory in here as well as the increased capacity and of course it is extremely easy to pop in everything and get upgraded now i did consider also upgrading the ssd that's in here but i want to keep the same windows installation just for comparison purposes i'll be upgrading that ssd to a two terabyte later on after i'm done doing the comparison testing between eight gigabytes and 32 gigabytes so let's actually jump in and see what the performance difference is going to be like so the first game we're going to be comparing here is mountain blade 2 banner lord running with the high graphics settings i didn't go with the ultra high or rather the very high settings because of the fact that it's still at the end of the day in our rtx 4050 and i don't want to push it too far that being said here we're seeing some pretty massive differences with having eight gigabytes of ram single channel versus 32 gigabytes of dual channel one thing to really pay attention to is the pretty massive increase in the utilization on the gpu where before it was more hovering around 50 to 70 sometimes actually shooting up to higher rates but really fluctuating dramatically versus being at almost 100 percent utilization all the time when we finally upgraded the memory i think that's the biggest gains that we're seeing here the fact that the memory is no longer being a bottleneck to the gpu that means that we're able to actually fully utilize our hardware here and we see some pretty massive percentage gains in both the fps average and the one percent lows and considering that this comes with a 144 hertz display that means that you actually will be able to take advantage of this really nice increase in performance the next game that I took a look at is Dying Light 2, and here we see it running with the high graphics settings, and we are using DLSS at the quality preset. While playing like this, the performance is actually pretty decent, though with the built-in benchmark, you should know that the 1% lows look disastrous on both, because anytime a new scene is being loaded in, there seems to be a hitch there. I've yet to try a single system that doesn't encounter this issue, though for some systems they are affected pretty dramatically less than others, but in general, there is is still a noticeable increase in the fps average though the increase in the one percent lows are is very superficial at least when it comes to the built-in benchmark while actually playing the game there is going to be a noticeable improvement in both the fps average and the one percent lows though 
I did also try out Tiny Tina's Wonderland, this running at the high graphics settings. And while we saw a very minuscule 3.7% increase in the FPS average, the real difference maker is here in the 1% lows with a 43.7% increase. And again, on a system that has a 144 hertz display that does also support free sync this is a welcome improvement and if you look at those frame time charts it is actually noticeably more consistent even though the fluctuations aren't all that dramatic i won't sit here and say that this was an unplayable experience with only eight gigabytes of memory single channel and in fact if anything this is really impressive considering the eight gigabytes of ram limitation but there is still a noticeable improvement to be had with a 32 gigabyte dual channel upgrade i'm sure you would get most of these improvements Improvements as well if not all of them with just 16 gigabytes of ram but keep in mind that it is just nicer to be able to have that extra headroom as you can see the ram utilization of the system with 32 gigabytes of ram is already almost at 16 gigabytes if we only had 16 gigabytes that would be kind of a problem I also did Returnal with the high graphics settings and we are using DLSS at the quality preset on both systems. And here we again see some improvements in both the FPS average and the 1% lows, overall leading to a really great gaming experience. And just continuing a very consistent trend here between the two RAM configurations. Really though, the biggest improvement of this upgrade was most prevalent in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, where I couldn't get a single run with the 8GB of RAM configuration to actually complete. Not only was it a disaster, but it would always end up crashing to desktop at some point in the benchmark. So while we couldn't even complete the benchmark at all with 8GB of RAM, with the 32GB dual channel configuration, we're actually now looking at really great levels of performance. Now this is only at the medium graphics setting, which both systems were set to, but this game is surprisingly demanding on hardware and at the end of the day, it's still a 4050 that's in here, so we have to be realistic with our expectations. Though if you're willing to mess around with frame generation, you can try to squeeze out some more performance and maybe turn up those graphics settings. But personally, I think the game still looks great at medium, and I'm really not willing to sacrifice any more performance. And the last game that I took a look at was Assassin's Creed Mirage. You're running with the high graphics settings, and we are using DLSS at the quality preset. And this is another one that showed some massive differences in performance. While an 81.8% increase in the FPS average is a really, really welcome sight, it's the <laughs> massive difference in the 1% lows that really makes a difference here, where by the end of the benchmark, the 1% lows were zero because of the fact that there were very frequent stutters that would hang the game for multiple seconds, effectively making it an unplayable experience versus getting 1% lows that are in the mid 60s. On a 144 hertz display, this is a really great showing. And you could get most of this improvement if you just went with 16 gigabytes of RAM if you were trying to go on the cheap side, but I would really recommend that you just spend the money and go with 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's going to give you a lot of headroom here. So as you can see, this memory upgrade makes a massive difference on this laptop, and I definitely recommend that you go about doing that. 32 gigabytes is what I really recommend you go with. 16 gigabytes is an option if you really want to go super economical with this. But I think 32 gigabytes is going to give you much more longevity for your system. There are some games out there that will start to push your system memory utilization very close to 16 gigabytes. And if you have a lot of things running in the background, like you have Discord open, you have multiple browser pages open. If you're just someone that doesn't even really ever close the programs that you're using all the time, you kind of just tab through everything. All of that is kind of just sitting there in memory, eating up space. And when you only have 16 gigabytes of RAM, that becomes very noticeable very quickly quickly 32 gigabytes is some nice headroom there and it's really not all that much more expensive it obviously depends on what region of the world you're in so this is not universal advice but if you can't afford 32 gigabytes i recommend you go with 32 gigabytes things are vastly different than they were five years ago where 16 gigabytes was pretty standard and 32 was really something you would only get when you were doing really demanding tasks a lot of software and a lot of games are starting to really push the ram utilization and 
again, if you're going to open up this system to upgrade it, I would recommend just going all out. Also upgrade your SSD to something with some decent capacity. And you pretty much will have a system here that should be good for the next few years of gaming. Yeah, it won't run everything at the highest graphic settings, but more than likely it will be able to run it, especially considering the fact that you have access to DLSS. DLSS and frame generation are two pretty killer features that are going to increase the longevity of these lower end systems by what I suspect to be a pretty dramatic amount. Add on to the fact that AMD's FSR frame generation also works with this and you're pretty much covered on a lot of different directions. So definitely check the system out and kind of mentally price in what kind of memory upgrade you'd like to do with it because you're really leaving a lot of performance on the table if you go with just the stock 8 gigabytes of RAM configuration. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.